Greetings, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are glad that you all have tuned in, and we pray that uh, uh, you've had a blessed morning so far and a blessed day. And we pray that, of course, something will be said that will help you in your walk and your journey with the Lord. Amen. We want to pray. We want to say that um, uh, we, we think it's important that when people hear the Word of God, that they give heed to it and that they uh, take heed uh, to the things that God share with them because uh, when you don't receive God's word in its purest form and you don't receive the wisdom of God then it causes you to miss God later on down the road the Lord is preparing us for our journey and on that journey there will be difficulties on that journey there will be trials and tribulations and if we're not allowing God to prepare us by molding us and shaping us with his word uh, we will not be prepared for the war we will not be prepared for trials and tribulation uh, and then we'll wonder why God isn't coming through for us uh, when hard times do come and a lot of times it's because we have rejected God's word. In fact, let's go look at that. Let's go to the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Hosea, just real briefly. And we want to look at a couple of, just, uh, just a few scriptures here. The book of Hosea, the fourth chapter. And we're going to read verse 6. And a lot of times, uh, when people quote this scripture, they only quote the first part of it and not the rest of it. So we're going to go over this whole scripture so that you'll, you'll get an uh, idea of what God is saying in its proper context. So, the fourth chapter of the book of Hosea. The fourth chapter of the book of Hosea. We're going to read verse 6. It says, My people are destroyed... For a lack of knowledge. Now I want you to see something there. It says my people. God is talking about his people. He's not talking about worldly people. That's only natural. And it's, it's uh, something that does not need to be stated. That worldly people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But God says my people are destroyed. And many people that say that they belong to God. You can't tell them that they, they, they will be destroyed. They think, well, I belong to God, so God's got my back. But God is saying, my people, my people, his people are destroyed. Why? For lack of knowledge. In other words, something that you should know that you, are, that you don't know. But look at what he says. Now, a lot of times, that's what people stop at. And if you ask people to quote he, uh, Jose 4 and 6, that's all they'll quote for you because that's all they know about it. My people, you know, Jose 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But look at why. He says, because thou hast rejected knowledge. So God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not because they are ignorant, necessarily you know not because they are stupid or in other words can't comprehend they're destroyed for lack of knowledge because they've rejected it it's just like a child you tell a child don't touch that stove it's hot and they may not have any concept of what heat is all they know is that they're curious and so they touch it anyway, so why did they get burned? Because they rejected the knowledge you told them. They have to see it for themselves. And God is saying, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not because it's not being taught. But why? Because thou hast rejected knowledge. In other words, God sent someone to you to, to tell you something. You reject it, you'll be destroyed 
because you've rejected what God has sent someone to share with you. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about, so get in all your school books, get in this Bible and learn every bit of it, learn it all. It, it's not about learning. It's not about what you learn in the Bible. It's about how much of it you accept. Look at what he says. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, what? I will also reject thee. So that's where the destruction comes in at. You're my people, yes. But you're destroyed, why? For lack of knowledge. Why is that lack of knowledge there? Because you've rejected knowledge. And I'm convinced there are people today who don't want to read the Bible regularly because the more they know, the more they're accountable for uh, in their minds. But listen, whether you know it or not, you're still accountable for it. You see that? You still so you need to be asking God to reveal to you his word cuz you're going to be held accountable for it anyway. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Look at what it says. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. In other words, the more well-off some people are, the more in the back of their minds they feel like they don't need God. And so they assume, because I have a lot of knowledge, or, or I have a lot of this world's goods, I don't necessarily need God. And now people might not say that, you know, in the front of their minds, but their actions reveal it. And of course your actions show what's really there. So from that, we're going to go on to this email that we received from this uh, lady and, and continue to talk about what we've been talking about, um, you know, uh, concerning hearing from God and why, why it's important. Uh, and, you know, how to hear from God. So the email says, Dear Pastor Bolden, uh, my name is so-and-so from Florida. I recommitted my life to Christ about five months ago. I have been saved when I was around 13, but I wasn't at a place to receive the word of God at that time. So everybody see that. This, this lady, this young lady, is admitting in the email that she rejected the word of God. She was not at a place to receive it. But so let's see what happened here. I have been reading my Bible and studying the word. I discovered your YouTube channel, which I really enjoy watching your devotions. It has allowed me to come to the realization that God has spoken to me through you on some areas of my life I wasn't aware of that I needed to take to God to deliver me from. Particularly, was R&B music that I had a really hard time to let go of that wasn't of God. I'm still learning a babe in the Lord. Even though I claim to be a Christian most of my life, my lifestyle showed otherwise. So everybody see that. So at 13, she committed her life to Christ, but she also admitted that she was not in a place to receive God, to receive the word of God. And so look at what she says there. Even though I claim to be a Christian most of my life, my lifestyle showed otherwise. So the question is, why did her lifestyle show otherwise? Now I'm not going over this to pick on this young lady because apparently God have done a work in her and now she's on the track that God has for her to be on. But I'm using this, and I hope she don't mind, but I'm using this as an example to show you what happens when you reject or you are quote unquote, not in a place to receive the word of God, your lifestyle will not line up with the word of God. And so you'll be one of those people that's claiming to believe in God, that's claiming to know, I know God has something for me to do, but you'll never reach what it is that God has for you to do because you have rejected God's word. And so what will happen is you will become a hypocrite you will become lukewarm. You'll have a form of godliness. 
you know that you need to serve God and but won't be able to because you're not in God's word for whatever reason you can't receive God's word and it's not that you can't receive God's word what's really going on is that you reject God's word and that's not God's will it doesn't matter how you may God may have come down from heaven and told you what he's called you to do and you may understand that better than anything but until you get to a place where you can receive God's word you'll be in trouble don't you know it's God's word that cleanses us how do we know to live right without reading God's word God's word is the is our law his commands for us and so when you reject it where can you go who are you gonna live for if you're not living according to God's word what what kind of lifestyle do you think you're gonna have when you reject God's word you see that <clears throat> all right so she said I'm still learning a babe in the Lord even though I claim to be a Christian most of my life my lifestyle showed otherwise last year I made a conscious decision I needed to go back to Christ so she's admitting that at some point she was so off track that she needed to go back to Christ now truth be told she may have come into the knowledge at the age of 13 that she needed God but when you reject God's word you reject God now you can't separate God from his word you see you can't do that alright so she said I felt so empty like something was missing and I'm telling you most of people when you reject God's word you're gonna feel empty you're gonna feel like something is missing and you know what happens when 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 people feels like something is missing they go trying to fill that void with worldly things and the more they try to fill it up the more dissatisfied they are and when they do come out of the situation with whatever it is they've tried to fill it up with sometimes it's relationships and and worldly goods and things like that when you get on the other side of it you still you feel more empty than you did before you see that she said I felt so empty like something was missing I finally found the true peace of mind that I've been longing for through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ she says I have a few questions I need answered I'm just going to read question one and three because I've already did question two she says, why sometimes I can hear from God so clear and some days it's so hard to hear from him. And then in, in, in the third question she says, the Lord spoke to me and said reprobate because I wanted to know what was, what was there a reason I asked him that I wasn't hearing from him like I normally do. So in other words, she asked God, why is it that I'm not hearing from you like I normally do? And his response was reprobate. She says, it has been a blessing <clears throat> to watch your devotions. Please continue to allow God to share the true gospel of his word through your ministry. Thank you in advance for answering my questions. Prayers and blessings to you and your family. All right. So, God answered her question by telling her reprobate. That's all he said, reprobate. So, yesterday we started off in the book of Romans. And, and basically started off talking about how people can get to a reprobate mind. The first chapter of the book of Romans and the 18th verse, it reads, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. What kind of men? Men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, when you have heard the truth, just like this young lady said at the age of 13, she dedicated her life to the Lord, but she was not in a place to, to receive God's word. That means that at some point, the word was being shared with her, but she rejected it. Now, my job as a minister of the Lord is to share God's word with you. Now, if you reject that word, then you're one of these people who hold the truth and unrighteousness. In other words, if I tell you it's wrong to do something and God is not pleased with it, and you still try to wiggle your way around it and still try to do it, you're holding the truth of God in unrighteousness. In other words, I'm, you've made up your mind, regardless of what that preacher says, 
I'm going to do what I want to do, and this is why. So in other words, you're holding the truth. You got the truth. It's been put in your lap. But you're walking in unrighteousness, and what does this word say? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of those people. In other words, the wrath of God abides on you. You have become a child of disobedience. And that's a dangerous place to be. So now let's, let's jump down to verse 24. We'll continue at verse 24. It says, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. In other words, what God is saying here is when you reject knowledge, just like what we read in the fourth chapter of the book of Hosea, the sixth and the seventh verse, when you re when you you'll perish and you'll be destroyed for lack of knowledge because you rejected knowledge. And when you reject knowledge, God rejects you and he gives you over to what the Bible calls a reprobate mind. The word reprobate literally means something that is unapproved. Something that God has rejected. And it, isn't it amazing that God will give you over to a reprobate mind? In other words, when you reject what he has ministered or preached to you, when you reject knowledge, God will turn you over so that you can do things to destroy yourself. When you don't accept the salvation of Jesus Christ, and I'm not just talking about salvation as in, oh, I'm going to heaven, thank God. I'm talking about salvation in salvation from you, yourself, your flesh, and its appetites that's designed to destroy you. When you reject God's salvation, what can he do but allow you to reject it? What's next? Who else is going to come along and save you? Who else? God has no choice but to give you over to that mind that you have. Now, let's go ahead and keep reading. It says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Okay, so what is he saying here? That people, when they reject knowledge, what have they done? They've turned, they've changed the truth of God into a lie. All you have to do is go to the third chapter of the book of Genesis, and we're not going to turn there now, but I'm just going to give you the brief summary. God told Adam and Eve, in the day that you eat of that tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, in that day you will surely die. And then the serpent come along and said, you won't surely die. And what did Adam and Eve believe? What did Eve believe? She believed that lie. And you may say, well, wait a minute, Brother Bowden, why are you just singling out Eve? Adam didn't believe that lie. He did it, but he didn't believe it. According to the word of God, uh, Adam was not deceived. Eve was. So Adam knew exactly what he was doing. He wasn't deceived by it. Eve was. So Eve believed a lie. She changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature. So in other words... It is impossible to worship God and believe lies at the same time. It is impossible to worship God and serve God and reject God's word at the same time. This verse 25 of the, the first chapter of the book of Romans says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You see that? You worshiped and served the creature. What creature? Whoever it is you believe in. Sometimes you can believe your own lies. I'm telling you, you could preach something, God's word, and folks will make excuses and will try to skate and skittle around it 
So who are you worshiping but yourself? Let's go and keep reading verse 26. For this cause, in other words, because they refused and rejected knowledge, because they've rejected the truth, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So, now you understand how people start down this road of homosexuality. Now, we're not talking about homosexuality, you see. But now you understand how people start down this road. Nobody's born that way. People start down that way because they've rejected God. I don't get you. Yeah, it's got churches ordaining homosexuals as ministers and preachers and pastors and things like that, but they've rejected God. You see that? And so this says God gave them up unto vile affections. And I'm telling you, when you reject God's word, he's going to give you up to vile affections. Your mind will be reprobate. You won't, you won't even know what's right and wrong anymore. You will think that you're okay. And you may say, well, Brother Bowden, what does this have to do with hearing from God? Well, when you refuse, I, I'm going to tell you how I am. I share the word of God as God put it on my heart to share with you all. If anybody argue with that, I have no argument for you. I, I have nothing. When God speaks through me, that's all I say. And I be quiet about it afterwards. I'm not here to prove God's word to you. I'm here to share with you the things that God have laid on my heart to share with you. God did not tell me to argue his word with people. You see that? And so when you reject what God has shared what God has brought to you. There's nothing I can do about it but pray for you afterwards. You see that? There's nothing I can do about it but pray for you afterwards. And so when you have rejected what God has shared, you're not going to hear anything else from God because you didn't take heed to what he's already spoken. So in other words, if, you want to hear from God on a continuous basis. Then what you need to do is receive from God what you have heard thus far. And not think that God puts his word out like a buffet that you can receive and reject what it is you have or have, don't have an appetite for. There's not one believer that's not going to hear something from God's word that doesn't rub their flesh the wrong way. In other words, that doesn't go against or doesn't hurt flesh some kind of way. But that's the whole object. It's for you to crucify flesh. And so if you want to continue to hear from God and hear God's word, you have to receive what he has told you on a continuous basis. You can't say, well, okay, yeah, Brother Bolden, he was on today. He was really preaching today. But, to, you know, and then the next day, nah, that don't, that, that, don't, that don't agree with my spirit. I don't, that just don't sit well with me. And you may be right. It may not sit well with you. It may not agree with your spirit. But we're not talking about your spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit, when he hears truth, he amens it. And so, it don't have to agree with your spirit for it to be God's word. And when you reject God's word, you cut yourself off from being able to hear from God any further. God's not going to waste his time. If you don't believe 10, time, 10 plus 10 is 20... You might not believe 10 times 10 is 100. So you don't get to move. You, you won't make the grade later on if you can't receive the elementary stuff. 
You see that? All through school, you learn that. They have to teach it. Nobody starts off teaching math, teaching you trigonometry, or teaching you calculus. They have to start at the elementary stuff. And if you don't believe the elementary stuff, you won't be prepared for later on. And so God's not just going to waste his time for people that are not prepared to hear his word. God will give you over to a reprobate mind. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 27, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their heart, burning their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. In other words, when they rejected God and they rejected the knowledge of God, God turned them over, and that's where he ended up at, men warning men, women warning women, and things like that. So that's where your reprobate mind will take you. But it's a whole lot of areas there in between. So you don't wait until you take on a homosexual spirit to realize, oh, maybe I'm reprobate. Because even a lot of them don't realize that they're reprobate. They still going to church. They still singing in the choir. They still preaching and sleeping with somebody of the same sex. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 28. And even as, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, in other words, because they rejected God and God's word, and they didn't retain it, in other words, when they heard it, they threw it away because, quote, unquote, it did not line up with their spirit or it did not their spirit did not agree with it and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge in other words they didn't want to God gave them over to a reprobate mind the, the devil didn't do it, do it God did it to do those things which are not convenient And so do you think God is talking to people with reprobate minds? No, you're, you're lost. So what you need to do is you need to come to God and ask him, Lord, what is it in my life that's, that's causing me to be this way? What is it in my life? Where did I turn, where did I go reprobate at? Where, where, at what point in my life did you turn me over so that I can repent and come back to you? So yesterday, towards the end of the message, we talked about high heels and women wearing them and how God is not for that. And, and I heard some of you in, in the spirit saying, oh, that's legalism. God's not concerned with what you wear, except God is concerned with how you present yourself. The Bible makes it clear all day long you're supposed to dress modest. And if you can reject what was spoken yesterday, that could be your downturn. And that could be your downfall. That's exactly where you could make that left turn at and start heading down the wrong direction. You're doing those things that's not convenient. Let me explain what I mean. When, you, when people wear high heels, it, it doesn't come natural to them. They have to get used to doing it. That right there should let you know it's, it's, it's really against nature when you have to train yourself to do something. And then, of course, that in itself leads to back problems, leads to feet problems, leads to ankle problems, leads to knee problems. You're doing things that's not convenient. Not just homosexuality, but when God gives you over, when God gives you over, you do things that's not convenient. In other words, things that's designed to destroy you, destroy your body, and, and then ultimately lead to destroying your soul. And God will give you over when you don't receive truth. And that's not God's will. Repent and ask God to reveal to you where you went reprobate at. At what point did he give you over so that you can come back to him and repent for whatever decision you made that caused God to give you over. Amen. We want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that had been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to listen into this broadcast. Have a blessed day.